Hello, my name is Jeff Passmore. I work for JDSU's sales support organization. And I'll be your host today for the next measurement that we're going to present on the HST 3000, that being the opens measurement or capacitance measurement. If you were with us for the resistance video, we left off on the resistance continuous screen. And as we had progressed to this screen, all we had, all we had done was use the down arrow key to, to cycle through the test. Well, from resistance continuous, if I hit down arrow, I simply wrap back around to the AC volt screen, which pretty much is the indication that uh, that's all I'm going to see by just pressing down arrow. So therefore, I got to escape out or uh, back out to the main menu. So I do that by hitting cancel. And the third measurement we said we always made on the cable pair is a measurement of length. Well, I don't have a kick meter, I have an open meter. So let's select number two, opens. Open meters read cable pair capacitance. Um, I knew that the first month I worked at the phone company. What they neglected to tell me about uh, capacitance was its definition. The definition of a capacitor is two conductors separated by insulation. That certainly sounds like a cable pair to me. In fact, you can think of a cable pair as a long, skinny capacitor. Right? And it re will react as a capacitor reacts in any given electrical uh, situation. Yeah. I'm going to switch over to my whiteboard here. An interesting thing about uh, capacitance, if I was going into the cable building business tomorrow and wanted to sell cable to your company, I would have to adhere to a very strict standard of capacitance across tip and ring. This is often referred to as mutual capacitance. The standard that I would have to adhere to is 0.083 microfarads of capacitance per mile of cable. Now the interesting thing about that standard is it applies to both 26 and 19 gauge cable. Well, I have a confession to make. When I was outside, I, I was not, uh, I was not, uh, I was an average tech. Uh, I was far from the garage uh, superstar. There are plenty of guys better than me. Things always came hard to me, and this was a very good example. I mean, it took me long enough to get my head around the resistance thing, right? The big wire has less resistance than the small wire. Then they threw the capacitance thing at me, and they said, oh, by the way, it's 0 0.083 microfarads per mile, 26 or 19. I thought, well, how in the heck did they do that? There's a huge difference between 26 gauge and 19 gauge cable. Well, as I said, they failed to give me the definition of a capacitor. In this instance, if the conductor sizes are going to change radically, the only thing as a cable manufacturer has left to fool around with is the insulation side of the definition. And that's exactly what they do. They vary the thickness of the insulation between 26 and 19 gauge to keep them both 0 0.083 microfarads of capacitance per mile. Okay. We'll go back to my HST. So what does that mean to us? Well, it means to us, if we're lucky enough to have a nice clean tip ring open, our tip and ring value will probably be the most accurate because it's based on that standard of 0 0.083 microfarads per mile. However, as repair people, we know it's rare that we get a nice clean tip ring open. Right? Usually one conductor is open, the other conductor makes it the whole way. In that case, we're in the capacitor that, that we're actually measuring is the short wire, right? So let's say for this example, the ring side is open. The capacitor would be the ring conductor itself. The other conductor would be ground, or shield in our case. And the insulation would be anything between the two, right? Whether that's air core, paper, icky pick. I think you get the picture. So as my screen looks, uh, my screen looks pretty much the same, with the exception of the sep uh, second sentence up there says up and down changes the cable type. Well, what that refers to is the cable fill type. 
like right here in the middle it says air core well, what I'm going to do now is kind of give you a visual explanation of what I just tried to explain verbally to you by hooking up to a very accurate cable simulator. I've had this guy for 30 years. And he mimics uh, very, very closely what cable looks like in, in the field. What I want you to do is watch the tip and ring number as I cycle through the fill types by hitting the down arrow. So I got 4529 air core. 4529 pulp or paper, same for jelly, same for two pair, my golly, the same for five pair. Isn't that interesting? So I have, uh, as I cycled through those fill types, my tip and ring number did not change a foot. That's because tip and ring is manufactured to the 0 0.083 microfarads per mile that I spoke of earlier. Now let's uh, watch what happens when I measure one conductor to ground, as, as we said before, our simulated ring open, right? We'll go down to ring to ground, note to footage, 4462, now let's see what happens. Pulp is 4958. My goodness, Jelly's 3852. Now, I'm not touching the simulator. All I'm doing is stepping through the different fill types. You can see there's some pretty radical changes in distance, right? That's because there is no single multiplier or single uh, factor when you're measuring uh, to ground like there is across tip and ring. The multiplier or factor changes based on what the cable's filled with. I know what you're probably thinking, well, what happens if I have half air core and half jelly? Well, this isn't rocket science. Just take a reading on air core, take a reading on jelly, and split the difference. If you got a little bit of jelly and a whole bunch of air, just leave it set to air. You'll get close enough. The main point being, do not shoot an open and jelly-filled cable and have the HST set to air. And then tell me the HST open meter is no good. Because <laughs> so I'll have to explain this whole thing over again. All righty. Uh, just like resistance, uh, there may come a time where um, the HST actually begins to read uh, the test leads or stray capacitance and show you something other than zero feet. The way to zero out the open meter is, is uh, pretty much identical to the way that we zeroed out the ohm meter. That is, find the configure key underneath cancel, select it. That takes you to the opens compensate screen. Here the directions are pretty clear. Open all three leads. That just means make sure they're not touching each other and press F4 to compensate. You've just told the machine, hey, I'm, I'm not hooked to anything, so zero out any stray capacitance that you see. When it's complete, it tells you it is complete, and it stamps the date and time for you. And when you hit cancel, uh, hopefully your machine shows zero feet if it was showing footage before. Also under uh, display, we give you the ability to set a custom capacitance under num number seven. Uh, that's sometimes used if you if you have a, a piece of cable that's uh, referred to as low cap cable. It's it's manufactured to a different standard. Now you would know if you had any of this because none of your open meters would work correctly in that cable. But what you could do is custom uh, set up uh, for that cable and make the open meter work accurately. You also notice there that I'm, uh, I will show you just raw capacitance if you want. And finally, under number nine, I'll take a stab at ringers. But before you get too excited, uh, I'm still not going to see the Kmart phone or the, or the, the Target phone. I'm, I'm really only going to show you the old Bell system ringer. We'll hit cancel. Uh, depending on what uh, lead you're monitoring right now, for example, I'm monitoring the ring to ground lead, whatever lead you happen to be, lead combination you happen to be monitoring, short those two clips together. So I'm going to short my red and green together and see what happens. 
Just like you know you cannot kick a line that is grounded, open meters don't work well either. So the HST's open meter is sniffing in the background for any condition that it, it uh, might see that could screw up the measurement. So right now it's saying, hey, hey, wait a minute, I see something out there that's really going to screw us up. Are you sure you want to continue? Now we let you override that selection just by pressing the OK key. But my advice to you is, uh, if that comes up, um, I wouldn't put too too much faith in in the accuracy of the result because the machine is trying to warn you that there's something amiss. Alrighty, that uh, concludes our our presentation on the opens measurement. Uh, thank you for attending, and uh, we hope you uh, decide to watch the next segment, which will be on longitudinal balance. So thanks again.